Good evening, everyone. I hope you've been enjoying your day and I hope you've been enjoying Destination to College Plus. I am um, a high school counselor and I also am an adjunct counselor at a community college in Los Angeles, California. So let's just get right into it. What is dual and concurrent enrollment? This is an opportunity for students to earn college credit at the same time they are earning high school credit. Students can be enrolled in two, uh, two academic institutions simultaneously. And to be honest, if you're in the state of Los, I mean, if you're in Los Angeles, you can do LACCD. So you can really take an online class at East LA College and Southwest College simultaneously during this distance learning experience that we all have during COVID-19. So you can be enrolled in more than two academic institutions at the same time, as long as your classes are not overlapping. Some of your courses may count towards high school diploma credit, and some courses will count towards high school diploma credit, and they will also count towards college credit and completing your lower division courses in um, institutions at Cal State and UCs and historical black colleges. There are diff three different avenues that your school can take for in dual enrollment. The first one is under the bill 288, which was established in 2015, students can enroll in college courses taught by professors at their schools. So some of you might go to schools where one of your uh, periods has a college professor and one of your teachers at your school in it. While taking that class, that is considered a dual enrollment class because you will be receiving college credit and high school credit. The pros of that is there's no transportation needed and classes are a part of your high school schedule. So that's a good thing. The cons, it limits your number of college courses you can take um, when we go back face to face and it may conflict with your AP courses in your school master schedule. And it also may conflict with your extracurricular activities. Another uh, way you can go is you can go directly to the campus and sign up for that college course. So you can actually enroll in college by completing what we call in California a K-12 form. And you complete it, your parent's signature, and your counselor has to approve the classes that you're taking. Some classes that are offered or have prerequisites, which means you have to have completed and passed a, score, a, a class with a C or better. So you have to make sure that your college, uh, your counselor signs off on those. The pros of that, you get to actually be on a college environment. So then you get to see the academic differences between a high school setting or a middle school setting and an actual college setting. Um, there are, the other pro is you can enroll in more classes because you're face-to-face -face with the professor. So you probably can take two classes. The cons is you do need transportation. Managing your college high school schedule can be kind of tricky if you are not used to it. And this one also interferes with your high school curricular activities. The last way is where I work. I work at a model school and believe it or not, it's called middle high school, middle college high school. So the middle high school model is the camp, the school that you attend sits right on the campus. It integrates your high school and your college curriculum simultaneously. This is the best one because you can take more classes in your school day. You also get to experience college life because you're going back and forth to a college and to your regular high school setting. You, uh, most students at a, a middle college or a middle high school can enroll up to nine units during the day. It doesn't interfere with your extracurricular activities and more likely you will receive what's called an associate's degree and what we call an IGETC or CSU certification. The cons is most of your middle school models, you have to apply to the schools in the ninth grade. There is an enrollment camp and they do not offer transportation like most of your magnet schools. Are there any questions about the, the three different models that you can take? All right, hearing none. So strategies for dual concurrent enrollment. Some of the strategies, where do you start? start early. I would suggest if I have any eighth graders listening that you would want to take a class when you are in your summer of your ninth grade. If I have high school students starting, especially ninth and 10th graders, this is the optimal time for you to start taking advantage of college classes. Find out the college classes that's offered at your high school or in your district 
And also try to complete two classes if you're in the ninth grade, two major classes, which is Health 11 and Communications 101. And I suggest and recommend those classes because Health 11, if you're in the Los Angeles Unified School District, is a required class for you to receive your high school diploma. It's also a class that gets you uh, familiar with the school without being a very intense class. And communication, I always tell students to take because it helps you in speaking in front of people. So that's something that you'll get used to when you graduate from high school because you do a lot of speaking and projects in college. Involve your high school or your college counselor. Some schools have both, some schools have one. At the school that I'm at, Middle College High School, we only have a 12th grade counselor and she acts as a high school, a college counselor as well. So she does, wears two hats. So make sure you make, um, have your high school counselor and your college counselor involved in the class selections because you wanna make sure the classes that you take that you pass with a C or better. Find out which college, colleges that you want to go to in the 12th grade, except dual enrollment credits. That's very important. Most CSUs and UCs accept dual enrollment credits. It still depends on that school individually, how, how they use the credits, but most schools do. Private institutions and Ivy Leagues, they have different parameters on dual enrollment. Sometimes they accept it as tech classes taken, but they won't accept it towards your degree. And historically black colleges and universities, they work under a consortium at, with, LAUS, uh, with LACCD. So if you take 32 units or higher, you are considered guaranteed enrollment or acceptance to that school if you complete the uh, mandatory credit. Any questions on that? Okay. Also take, uh, right now we are in a COVID-19 situation. So the Los Angeles Community College District, which is LACCD, they are online until the summer of 2021, fall 2021. So you have a great opportunity to take what we call asynchronous classes. And that means those are classes strictly online, which means they don't interfere with your school schedule. And you can take those classes where you can look up the information and work at your own pace as long as you complete them by the due date. Make sure you understand what's called the K-12 form. This form asks for your personal information, such as phone number and email addresses. Your parent has to sign off on it. And once again, like I said before, your high school counselor or your college counselor has to sign off on your K-12 forms. For K-12 students, there are certain unit parameters and we call uh, in the college world units, you call them credits in the K-12 world. So in your fall and spring semesters, which is normally fall is at August to December and spring is February to June, you can take up to 11 units. So as long as you don't go over 11 units, the state of California lets you take those classes for free. In the winter, which is normally January and in the summer, which is the end of June and the whole month of July, you can take up to nine units. So as long as you stay under 11 units for the fall and spring and nine units for the winter and summer, you can go to college for free. The only thing that you will be obligated to purchase is your textbooks. Some schools do not have grant funding textbooks. So you are, um, you must have purchased your own textbooks. And I would say go to amazon.com prime because they always are cheaper on Amazon. Any questions on where to start? Okay, so you keep hearing me say about a K-12 form. So. I know it's a little blurry, but this is the actual K-12 form that the Los Angeles Community College District uses. Make sure you have your name. And one thing I forgot to say, you have to apply to the college district. So if you're in LA CCD, which is Los Angeles Community College District, you must first apply to the district. And once you apply, you get what's called a, a ID number, a school ID number. And right now they are in their 9,000. So you'll get a 9,000 number. And you can use this form along with that number and you complete it. Like I said before, the, the highlighted information, it says this is where you put your parent information, I mean, your information, your address. You must, uh, you must supply them with a uh, email address that you knew, not just any email address. And then you put your 9,000 number, you sign it and date it, your parent sign and date. 
And then down here where it says college enrollment information, this is where you and your counselor will sit down and discuss what classes you should you take or you shouldn't take for the uh, college and how they will help you or make it more competitive or make you more competitive in college for when you're applying to your 12 year, uh, your four year institution. So most forms look like this. Now the district has went to what they call a dual uh, dynamic document. So you have to apply all online and you can ask your high school counselor, especially if you're in LAUSD, what the dynamic document is for LACCD because they all have now been trained. So if you are not at a middle college uh, model school, but you're at a typical comprehensive high school, my biggest recommendation that I would have you to do is complete what's called an IGETSI, a general education transfer curriculum. Don't worry about the transfer part because all college uh, 12th grade students are first time freshmen. So you're just using this certification so you can make sure you take the appropriate classes for your um, college, the college of your choice. The completion of this will help you with lower division classes and it also helps with those non-general uh, educational courses such as foreign language or your multicultural studies or history studies when you get to a CSU or Cal State. So it's very beneficial. The minimum. Have, um, yes. Sorry, we That's have okay. a few questions. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you. That's all right. Um, the question says, uh, is it too late to enroll in classes in community college right now? It's too late to enroll in the fall classes. However, if you can uh, apply to college right now, and that's just going to the website, and if you're whatever school you're looking at, they always have apply now. You can apply now. And it takes, um, in the LACCD district, it takes like 48 hours to get your ID number, and you can apply for the winter session, which is the month of January 4th to February 7th, and you can apply, you'll be ready to apply for spring. So, it's not too late to apply for at least fall, I mean, winter and spring, but the fall semester has closed. The Another next question, question um, sorry, it's uh, okay. another student is asking if a student has an IEP, um, does the schools, community college schools offer any program or services for students that have an IEP or need more accommodations? They do. Um, all schools um, are federally funded, so they still have to offer the um, IEP or and they don't call them IEPs. They um they use student services. So every school has a student services, and that's at a college, a two-year college and a four-year college. What you would do is go to the student services office, and it's student need service office, and you will supply them with your IEP, in which you can ask your school to download that IEP and actually give you a physical copy, and then they will evaluate your IEP. So you can still have things on your um, student services record and community college that says you need more time for tests or you need more time to do your homework or you need somebody to help you take notes or you need um, assistance when it comes to purchasing the books. So there are always student services that are located at every university in every two-year school to help you with accommodations and modifications. Those are the two. Yes, thank you so much. No problem. Thank you for the question. Um, also, I have to stress this in college, these do not get you anything but heartache and pain. So we always must maintain a minimum of a C grade average. And that way, when you have that 2.0, you will get your certification. Another thing I can't stress enough if you're in um, high school is AP scores can help you with your IGETSI. So if you're taking AP English, AP Calculus, AP Physics, AP Chemistry, AP Spanish Language, or Literature, those classes are AP U.S. History. Those classes, if you score three, four, or five, can help you in the Area 1B section of your, your um, IGETSI. And they also help you in the A6, the A6, the A, Area 6 of the IGETSI. So that means you can still be, you can be more competitive because now you have AP courses on your high school transcripts and you're gonna show that you had dual enrollment courses. So that even makes you more competitive in that 12th grade sitting because now they still, you can do, you can manage academics in both um, genres and that's something that's awesome. Also, 
you have to understand that I get C certifies you in Cal State and UC. So you can get an I get C certification just for UC for completing one portion that I get C. But if you finish another group one and two, you will get what's called a CSU certi uh, certification of I get C too. I always recommend my students just to complete the entire I get C because right now you might say, oh, I want to go to Cal State Northridge. But then when you get to the 12th grade, if you're not already in the 12th grade, you might go, but I don't want to go to UCLA. Or you might be in the 12th grade thinking, what classes, where, what school should I go to? And if you limit yourself because you only completed one part of the IGETC, then you kind of put yourself in a pigeonhole. But if you finish the whole certificate, then the, the limit is yours, sky's the limit. So let's look at that IGETC. So this is, um, and I know it's probably small, but this is what an IGETC looks like. So the blue area is all you see. That's everything that UCs offer, the, that UCs count for. So area 1A, you must complete what's called English 101. You complete English 101, no problem, you see it better. Now area 1B, you have an option. You can complete English 102 or English 103. And for those who are in LAUSD, anything in the red, those classes count as dual enrollment courses that go on your um, individual graduation plan. So if you are a student in Los Angeles Unified School District, you should have heard of what's called an IGP. So I normally highlight everything in the red because that helps students to pick those classes that they get more bang for their buck. So they can finish that class at a college and it counts for their high school. Um, communications, area 1C, you have to complete that too. So in area A, um, area one, you have to complete two, at least um, the maximum two English classes in your communication. I always suggest students to take English 103, which should be highlighted in red because it's a dual enrollment course and so is English 102. Huh. But I always suggest students to complete English 103 because English 101 and 102 are what we call um, writing classes of, and the other English 103 is persuasive English. So you get the best of both worlds. And I want to say you see look higher at the English 103 because you've already completed 101. Any questions on area one? Um, we have a question uh, regarding the yeah. IGET certificates. So it says, yeah. please explain more about the IGET certificates. Uh -huh. What we're looking at now, what's the question? Um, that was the question that they just want to know, explain more about the IGET um, certificates that that you were, you were speaking about in the previous slides. Oh, that's this, this, this screen right here is the bigger explanation of the I get to. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. So it, area one is your English communication component. Now area two of the I get to is your mathematical concepts and quantitative reasoning. So you have to complete at least one math uh, um, area in the I get to, either a quantitative math, which is statistics, or a higher level math, which could be college uh, algebra or a calculus series. My recommendation for all students is if you are not on a STEM track, which means you have no intentions on majoring in any um, science, technology, engineering, or mathematics, when you get to a four year institution, then if you complete math 227, which is considered a statistics class, then you have um, literally finished your lower division math class at a four-year institution and it's transferable. All the classes that I'm talking about are what we call transferable. So that means when you get to a university and present your transcripts, those classes will count towards your degree at a Cal State or a UC school. The other two classes that work well with high school students are Math 260, which we consider pre-calculus and Math 265, which we consider Calculus AB. And once again, if you're in LAUSD, the classes in red will are dual enrollment, so they will count as you take them in your high school setting as well. Any questions on area two? Okay, area three is what we consider arts and humanities. You must complete at least three classes in this area. So there's two ways to do that. You can take two classes in area 3A and one class in area 3B. Or you can take one class in area 3A and two classes in area 3B. Normally, most students in high school are more successful at an 85% rate of taking the area 3A2 classes because those are like art appreciation, 
music appreciation and theater, intro to theater. So you don't really have to know how to draw. You don't really have to know how to play an instrument or sing. And you don't have to know how to act. But those are foundation classes that if you wanted to go into that degree or major, that's the road you would take. But Art 101 and 102 are classes that are successful with high school students. And so is Music 111 and Theater 100. But like I said, it's up to you, but you have to take at least one to two in that area. And then in 3B, you have uh, various questions you can take. But the tricky part about this is those classes, you must, some of those classes you are, have to already pass another class to even get into those classes. So the classes that we recommend for high school students is Humanities 1 and Philosophy, uh, philosophy 1. Humanities is like a junk pile of art, music, and or, uh, literature, but it, it touches on all bases. And then philosophy is more of a thought-provoking class. And if you notice, philosophy one is in red. So it's a dual enrollment class that goes, that counts towards an elective in your high school setting. Is there any questions on area three? No, well, we do have a question um, regarding a student saying it, if they prefer to take cosmetology classes and at a community college while they're in high school, if that, that is possible. You can, um, cosmetology, you have to be a certain age and I wanna say 17 and a half. So some of the classes you might can take that's foundational uh, for cosmetology, but when you get into the chemistry part of co cosmetology, you have to be of a certain age limit to um, take those classes. Any other questions? Thank you. No. no. And not, since you said cosmetology, I wanna throw in, you have to have the same 17 and a half to do certain child development classes as well. So certain, you have to be of a certain age limit because you're either around chemicals and in child development, you're around other small children and you have to be fingerprinted and you have to have your uh, fingerprints ran through the California teacher credential. Okay, so area four is the sociology, social and behavioral science. This area, you have to take at least three classes or nine units as well. So you can take a combination, you can match, match your classes as long as you have two different disciplines, which means if I take Econ 1 and History 2, and then I take Political Science I've, I've, and Pass with Caesar Better, I've fulfilled that area. Or I can do a straight um, interdisciplinary sequence. And what that means is I can look at Anthropology and I can take Anthropology 102, 103, and 104. And then I've also can fulfilled that segment as well. So you can mix and match, or you can just take a whole sequence in one subject and you want to satisfy area four. And if you notice, there are a lot of things in area four and there was some in area two that are LUSD. So for example, if you take econ, uh, economics one or two at the college, you don't have to take 12th grade e uh, economics. That goes for the same thing as political science. If you take political science at a community college in LUSD, then you do not have to take government in the 12th grade. And I strongly suggest like, especially if you're in the ninth and 10th grade that you try to take some of these classes because then when you get to that 12th grade and that senior right is does set in, you've already completed a lot of your courses that helps you to relax more and have fun your senior year. Any questions? Okay, area five of that gets me is what we call our physical and biological science. So you have to take one physical science lecture or lab and then you have to take one biological science lecture or lab. So this is a tricky section. So if I decide to take astronomy and just astronomy, that's just my lecture and I will satisfy area 5A. But when I get to area 5B, I must take a lecture and a lab so I can satisfy area 5B and C. So I would take hmm, physiology one because if you notice it's bold, um, bold little lines Anything that's highlighted with a line under it has a lecture in the lab. So if I take physiology one, I'm completing my lecture and my laboratory science, and I can complete the whole area five, and that's great. Or I can reverse it, and I can take astronomy one in area 5A, and then I can take astro um, astronomy five in 5C. That's also a lecture and a lab within itself. And then in 5B, I could take a anthropology 101, just the lecture. So in area five, you must make sure that you complete at least one of these sciences with a lecture in the lab. And then the other one, you can just do a, a lecture in no lab. 
Now, if you are a STEM major, I would highly suggest you do both lecture and labs because that'll help you when you get to a four-year institution on lower division classes. Any questions on area five? Um, there's a question. There's a question regarding uh, what class is regarding political science, or what is political science? Uh, government. Political science is what we call um, U.S. government in high school. Political science is one is U.S. government in high school. And a tidbit for those who are trying to get ahead, I'm gonna just give y'all a little other one. History two, if you take that before the 10th grade, you have completed your world history class as well. So if you take a class before you get to a grade level, it will count towards that grade level. So history two in LAUSD world is considered world history. And then let me just throw in history 12 is considered US history for your 11th grade. So if you take those classes prior to your grade entering, and pass those classes to see it better, you can, re, you can send that transcript to your uh, high school counselor and then you don't have to take those classes in high school. So that's, that's just a little bit of help. And then area six is our foreign language part. We always suggest that students can complete this when they're in high school. So there's three different pathways to complete in area six. You can complete, well, four. You can complete Spanish one, uh, American Sign Language one, or French one, or if they have any other languages at other community colleges. This is uh, Southwest College. That's one way. So you can take a semester of a foreign language at the college. Another way you can complete it, which is a, probably a better avenue for high school students because you have to do two years of a foreign language at your school, is you can complete your foreign language one and two at your high school. And the IGETC will accept that, the, uh, the colleges will accept that if you do two years equivalent to your high school, if you are a high, uh, in an honor Spanish speakers class, that counts as two years in most LAUSD schools. If you complete one year of honor Spanish speakers, you, can, you have satisfied area 6A. And the last way is if you take the AP Spanish language uh, test, you can also satisfy your area 6A. So we all, uh, even in college counselors, we always suggest that we want to see your transcripts from high school for that area because sometimes it's hard to fit a foreign language into your um, curriculum at a, a community college. Any questions on the first page? Okay, either. And the last part, which is in yellow, like I said before, this is the Cal State part that you have to complete. So all the blue is Cal State and UC, but then Cal State has two additional courses that you must complete. So you have to do group one, which is your history. You can do any of those history. Um, a tidbit of information that's culturally relevant, history 41 and 42 are African-American study classes and history 43 is a Chicano's Latino study class. So any one of those will satisfy your um, group one and then group two, if you notice, political science. One of the questions that might be asked, if I do political science on the first area, does it count for the second area? I'm gonna tell you already, no. So if you wanna do political science for the CSU, choose something else on area, let me go backward, on area 4A through G, so 4 through J. So if you, you don't choose political science over here because you're gonna use it for the Cal State part. Any questions on I get to? So that's a, the I get to in a nutshell. And then, is, oh, oh, go ahead. Sorry, a student asked, um, currently they're taking psychology um, doing mm -hmm. enrollment. If they pass a class, does this count for, for their general education college requirements? Um, if you are in the Los Angeles Unified School District, yes, psychology does count in your social science area of your IG, um, IGP. I believe it's if it covers, yeah, the general education and in college. Yeah. In, oh, yes. It's um, in area four, psychology one. Yes. It, it covers one of the areas, one of the classes in that area. You would need to take two more. So basically, you have to complete this whole, like, get the, this whole form in order to receive the certification. You can't complete partial of it. You have to complete all areas one through six. And then, like I said, if you're doing a CSU, you have to complete group one and two. Any other questions on that, Getsy? Is it possible for students to start, like for instance, taking classes since ninth grade and finish the Getsy by, or close to finishing by the time they graduate high school? In my world as a counselor, 
you if you start in the ninth grade and you take minimum two classes per semester, you can't finish that. Um, I get the and then in the summer, I always try to tell kids to take two. So if you take two, four, six, eight classes a year, which means two in the fall, two in the winter, two in the spring, and two in the summer, you can't finish this. I get the yes. And I'm going to show that too. I mean, I hope it popped out. Um, so that's one pathway. Another pathway that looks similar to it, I don't know why it's so similar, but that's how they made them, is what we call a California State University General Education. Same format as I get the, if you complete these classes with a 2.0 or higher on a 4.0 scale, you can, it can become a certification for when you attend a Cal State school, which they're 23 in the state of California. Um, once again, you can use AP exams to cover uh, area one of the IGETI, I mean, of the CSU. And you guys have to score three, four, or five. And it helps with your history and your US Constitution for CSUs. It looks just like the Agetsi, exactly like the Agetsi, it's similar. The biggest difference with this one, it's the same thing. Area one is your English language and communication. Area two is a little bit different, but they put the science and the math, but it's the same exact classes. Area three is still arts and humanities. Area uh, D, I'm sorry, area D is your social science, which we, those, any of those classes. And unfortunately I didn't ha highlight the red, but if you were to get the one on I get the, um, it's the same ones. And what I'll do with final um, with fulfillment fund, I will uh, make sure that they get them so that they can hand them out to you. So it's the same exact thing. Complete this certification. You will also get a, um, a CSU certification. The biggest difference is area C. But I already told you that if you complete Health 11, which is the dual enrollment class that counts as your LUSD Health, you've already completed Area E in there. And then similar to the I get the, you have to do Group 1 of a history and then political science. So both of them work the same way. It's just this one. The CSU is only for CSU. It doesn't give you a leeway for UCs, where the I get the is a bigger one for your bank for your buck. You can do UCs or Cal States with I get the. The CSU strictly for its CSUs. The I get the is for both UCs and Cal States. Any questions on that? But the classes are exactly the same on what you would take. So with those who ask asking, how can I complete this plan? How can I do this plan? Um, so planning for this dual enrollment, how can you complete it? And this one I will forward over there too. So basically I sat down four years ago with students from middle college high school and a former counselor. And we looked at the trends on what classes were successful for high school students and what classes work better in their schedule. And we basically laid out a four year plan for students to complete not only their IGETI, but this plan you can complete two different degrees as well. So you can get two associates of um, arts with this plan. And it basically shows you exactly what classes you need. And then we give you some autonomy with some of the classes that say select two more classes that you want to take or select three more units. And it's your choice of what those units would be as long as they fit into those degrees. Now, I can provide this with Fulfillment Fund. And what they can do is send it out. And um, if you're an LAUSD, um, you can ask your counselor, because I work for LAUSD as well, um, to contact Dr. Sims at Middle College High School, and I can shoot this over to your any of the counselors as well. And it just is a floor map that says this is how you complete an uh, IGETI and a degree. And so most students who complete this will complete their IGETI, they complete the CSU certification, they complete two degrees, and they complete their high school uh, diploma requirements all in one sitting because we try to make it as easy as possible for students to just follow a plan that helps them and doesn't stress them out. So, and um, our ninth graders normally take uh, Counseling 20, which is just a class to acclimate you to the uh, two-year um, college. And it goes over career planning as well. So it helps you with your career pathway in your high school. And then from there, if you notice, I talked about Art 101 and 102, that was on IGETC and the CSU. 
talked about Health 11. That was also an I Getsy. And I also, you see in the summertime, in the ninth grade, we recommend that they take their biology three or anatomy. So that, cause that fits better in the summer than it does in the um, winter, I mean, the spring and the fall. And so we just laid it all out. And once again, anything that's ever highlighted in red, it always means that that counts as your college class and your high school class on your IGP with the LAUSD district. Any questions on what you're looking at? Is this a nice floor plan? And I thank the students of the class of 2021, 2020, and 20, 2019, and 2018. No questions on that? Y'all just want it, huh? <laughs> okay, the last thing, Ben, if it's a good, oh, go I ahead. Um, go ahead. As a student says that, so if I follow the, this chart flow, what happens mm -hmm. when I graduate from high school? When you follow this chart flow and you do everything on this chart, you can potentially receive two certifications, which is I guess the NCSU, and you can receive two degrees and your high school diploma because you still are taking classes in high school at the same time. Any other questions? Okay. So the benefits of dual enrollment, like I said, you're on, you have, you're taking actual college classes that count towards both high school and college. Passing the classes guaranteed in college and high school credit, but it does not guarantee your four year, um, you get into that four year institution because you apply as first time freshmen without a safe time to go over. It gives you an idea of what full-time college course would look like. It helps you um, enroll in courses that are not offered at your, your school. So some of the classes that are offered at a, a community college, they don't, excuse me, they don't fit inside of your, your schedule at your school, but you wanna take it such as the, uh, the question that said the cosmetology, or if I wanna take uh, real estate. So some of those courses are still counted for credit in your high school, but it gives you a, um, a chance to add other courses that your school does not offer. And the course gives students a closer look at her academic or his or her academic um, career. So it helps you to streamline your focus when you get to the 12th grade. What do you want to major in? What am I interested in? And given some of these classes, you start to sit in those classrooms, like some students sit in administrative justice and they figure out, oh, I want to do criminal, criminal law. So they start taking the administrative justice classes and get that degree, or, um, or which also has a certificate to it. And then when they get to a four-year institution, then they go into criminal uh, administration and they can continue with that, that program. And it gives them a closer look at what they want to do with their career. Also, it gives a head start in accumulating college credits. And in this world where everything costs money, anything that can help you accumulate college credits, that means you're taking off prices on your college life in a university. So you don't have to take out as many loans um, when you get to that four-year institution. And always, I always stress to all high school students that it makes you competitive um, in this world that when you're looking at the schools of your choice, whether it be Cal State, UCs, or schools outside of the state of California, you now have a, a document that says, I can do everything. I can do AP, I can do high school, and I can do dual enrollment, and it just makes you competitive. And that's something that you always have to think about. So you want to keep, you know, 2.0 is beautiful, but I always try to stress the kids that 325 or higher um, will really guarantee you um, a, a challenge in getting to your, not a challenge, but uh, it helps you get towards the college of your choice. But I always tell kids to apply to all their colleges because only the college can turn you down. So those are the um, benefits of the dual enrollment program. And so now I leave it open for questions because I know I didn't go over any of the majors. And so since that's going to be my first question to you guys. At Southwest College, there's over 60 majors. So you can major in um, biology, mathematics. You can major in um, psychology, sociology, administrative justice. You can do a degree in child development. Um, you can start your nursing program, which is a great place to start. 
And anybody that's interested in nursing, I strong, strongly recommend that you, anything in nursing or medical, I strongly recommend you look into, into a degree called liberal studies, natural sciences. And I'll say that again, liberal studies, natural sciences, because that helps you complete lower level, lower level science classes at a four year institution. So if you are close to trade tech or college or city college or LA Pierce Mission or East LA, West LA, Southwest or Harvard teacher, I mean, Harvard College, I strongly suggest that you go onto their website and look at their programs and degrees and certificates. And that's where you can start. Now, the flow chart that I, I, I gave you, the one thing that we did do with this flow chart is you can take some classes that might match one degree and, and maneuver it to match the degree that you want. So for example, if I'm trying to get my interdisciplinary studies, social and science behavior degree, and, but I'm trying to do a natural science. So I'm gonna take some of these courses out that goes to that degree and put the courses that I need. So you can play around with this flow chart to match the degree that you want, whether it be business, psychology, sociology, um, criminal, um, administrative justice communication this chart is a, a living document that can help you it helps you to navigate what you want so you can pre-plan your your flow chart so it's not something that has to be this way it can it can also include other degrees i have a student right now he is at 110 credits in the 10th grade and he's on track to do three degrees by the time he finishes in 2024 so I try to give students the world is your oyster resources and it's up to your motivation and what you want to do to try to just get everything you can absorb whatever you have. And right now is College Awareness Month. The, the, the quote that I have is no one can take education away from you. So whatever you want to do and however you want to do it, you, you absorb everything you can right now through these young years.